Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. Kellen here with Droid Life. Today, we're looking at something pretty special that kind of shocked everyone, I think, a little bit. This is a Nexus 6, and it's not just any Nexus 6. It's actually running Android N. So the Android N developer preview has been announced by Google. It is available. It's supposed to be for developers, but of course, we wanted to flash it to find out what's new, play with the new stuff and all that. But anyway, yes, Android N. I know we don't know what the N stands for. It's official, and it's only March, and Google I.O. is two months away, but we have it now. Google obviously thinks whatever they've concocted here with Android N is ready for developers to sort of take a crack at and so they're making it available and yes if you have a nexus 5x nexus 6 nexus 6p nexus 9 uh pixel c or nexus player you can flash this right now if you want it's up to you obviously it's a first preview developer build things could be broken who knows how that's going to go you may not want to do this if it's your daily phone but hey, we kind of live a little bit on the wild side with this stuff and wanted to test it out so what we're going to do now is just sort of walk through all of the new goodies all right, so Google's actually baked in quite a bit of new stuff. You know, we always think as you know the platform matures, they're, they're not going to be able to add as many new cool things, but we actually have quite a bit of stuff. So number one is going to be multi-window support, and I'll show you that in a second. But basically, that allows you to run two apps at the same time. You know, we've seen this on Samsung phones, and, and iOS does it now, and a lot of people are doing it, but Google's built it in natively now. Uh, they've enhanced the notifications, which will show you. The quick settings tile panel is different as well. There's a data saver option there's android tv recording and number blocking and call screening and even vpn access for um, android at work and then doze now is smarter than ever and a lot of the stuff we can't show you but um, we're going to talk about at least some of the forward facing stuff that you will be able to play with so uh let's let's do first things first we'll pull this down and just ignore what you're seeing right now we'll jump all the way to the bottom and show you that indeed we are running android and this is a nexus 6 um, if we scroll down, build number is NPC56P. And if you're looking for a Easter egg, there really isn't one. I mean, this is it. You get an N to stand for Android N. And if we long press on that to get in here, it is Flappy Bug Droid in Marshmallow Land. So uh, there isn't really anything new going on there. So you guys have seen that before. Um, but yes, we do we do get an N. Uh, so let's let's jump back here, back to home. So let's talk about some of the stuff. Uh, in terms of home screen, this stuff really hasn't changed. It's still the Google Now launcher. And yes, hey, look at that. There's an app drawer. I don't know why everyone thought that was actually going to go away, but there is an app drawer. Uh, but let's 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 look first here at notifications because there's a lot of stuff going on up here in notifications. Uh, so notifications have changed. They are now in sort of a white card style format. They're bundled together, but they give you more information at the same time. Uh, eventually, once apps are updated, you're going to be able to reply to a lot of things in line with the with the keyboard popping up over whatever you're doing and just letting you reply here. You don't have to open the app. We've seen that in some apps like Hangouts with Quick Reply, but the UI is going to change. So if I were to hit reply on there, uh, this is an old. This must be an older version of hangouts not what we're expecting to see and so it'll pop up that sort of hovering um dialog box where you can type in quick reply you guys have seen that the ui should change at least according to what google's posting in all of the the developer preview stuff so that should change but you can see i've just got a different layout here it's got who it's from what time it's got the message and then reply uh, if we look in gmail this is where it gets really nice so here is just an email that came in um, and it's got obviously who it's from what time email address subject and then it does pretty much most of the email that was sent and then reply or archive uh where it gets really crazy if you jump into say a whole bunch of emails like here's a bunch here's a bunch of bundled emails um so that you can expand them individually so i can drag and expand um i don't know if i can oh yeah i can shrink that up it looks like to or i can just tap on the up arrow and that will shrink that up so you can you can shrink things you can expand things and that just screwed everything up um and so you can really get a lot of detail from your notifications uh, and so then I can reply, but I can basically read almost all of these emails right from within the notification shade now, which is, um, which is pretty crazy. Uh, you can also see if we make some of these go away. Um, if you, uh, if you want to shrink these up so you can swipe these away just like you normally would, but you can also just do this sort of half swipe and you get this little settings menu. And if I tap on that, it sort of gives you notification controls over that specific app. So you can go in there and sort of tweak that stuff. So you used to sort of long press and get into that menu. Now it's just sort of like a little half swipe over. Um, I don't know that I necessarily like that implementation because I think a lot of people will just be toggling things they probably shouldn't be, but, uh, that is there. So, uh, over 
overall notifications though seem to be much more powerful or at least provide you with much more information. Um, all right, so there's a clear all button. So we'll watch that clear away. And I'm not going to reply to Tim. All right, so if we go back into the notification shade, you will notice up top, as was leaked a couple of weeks ago, we have a new sort of style up here where a single pull down gets you to your notifications and also these sort of quick toggles. Um, you can tap this arrow and that expands it. And you'll notice there's kind of a neat little animation there where each icon sort of goes to its own little position, which is kind of cool. Uh, if you want to access that immediately, we still have the two finger swipe down, which gets you right into there. Uh, so some other things to note, this is now paginated. You can add enough quick toggles to have multiple pages of stuff. There is an edit button down here, so I can tap edit. And this gets me into uh, this sort of edit field so I can like move data saver in there if I want to toggle that on. Um, you can rearrange things. So hotspots over there. Let's say I want my flashlight to show up in those initial quick toggles. I can actually move it into sort of my top five and then that will show in that single pull down quick toggle. But so you can see you can move all the stuff. If you don't want something in here, you can drag it down here to the bottom. And so you really do have a sort of fully functioning um, edits edit menu there. Uh, and again, I pull this down, you can see I have flashlight now in there and it wasn't there before. So uh, kind of some cool stuff going on there. If I pull this down though, let's jump into settings, because in settings, things are quite a bit different. Well, they at least provide more information. So up at the top, we now have a, we now have a new suggestion section. So it's telling you some things that maybe you should do to your device. We don't know what all of these are going to be. But at this time, since I just fired this phone up, it's telling me I should probably put a screen lock on and I could maybe change my wallpaper if I want to. Um, you can tap these and remove them. I also don't know if you can swipe them away now. So they're just suggestions. And if you tap on those, they will take you into some different UIs to do some of that stuff. So it's kind of a neat little thing and it'll be interesting to see how that grows. Uh, if we look at the regular settings panel, uh, it, it doesn't look a, a lot different right now, but you will notice there are additional items of information under each sort of category. So like display says adaptive brightness is on and notifications says I have 43 apps installed. It tells me my ringer volume percentage, uh, my battery percentage, and also um, how much is left, your storage and how much you're using your memory usage. And so it's starting to give you all this information without actually having to dive into your settings. So it tells you, you know, like what Wi-Fi network you're on, Bluetooth is disabled and things like that. So they're really starting to show you some more information there, which is, which could come in handy and could save you from having to jump in and out of uh, each setting all the time. Uh, but if we do jump into one, so we jump into brightness here. You can see adaptive, adaptive brightness and ambient display are in here. We do have the press button, power button twice for camera feature. So that's sort of been moving its, its way along in Android devices, but it looks like it's just baked in now. Uh, but you will notice we do have a, a hamburger menu up here. So you can tap that and that'll let you jump into say users or you can swipe that out and get into your notification settings. And so instead of tapping back and then scrolling through, now if you're in, your, in a setting, you can actually swipe this out and then jump directly into something. Might save you a tap or two. Uh, and that's essentially how that works. You can tap the menu up here or you can swipe out from the edge and that gets you into more of that stuff. So. Uh, yeah, some things have changed there. All right, so if we take a look now at multi-window, which is probably what you guys have wanted to see, we'll, we'll see sort of where Google's trying to go with this. So in order to activate it, uh, you long press on this app switcher button, but you actually have to be in an app in order to do so. So I'll just fire up Chrome. So here's Droid Life, and if I long press on that, there you go, it flips into a multi-window. So you can see the top half becomes Chrome, and the bottom half is actually my app switcher because it's bringing up essentially your recent apps in case you want to jump into one of those. Um, so I could do that. So if I tap on news and weather, I now have a split screen experience and I can interact here or I can go up here and play with Droid Life. Uh, there is a little white sort of bar here in the middle that does allow you to resize these somewhat. Um, you can't like drag it all the way into here and make it crazy. Um, you can though swipe that all away and it'll then let that app take over. So let me show you that again. So if I choose this, um, you can resize, resize, or I can swipe this all the way up and then that app becomes full screen then. So, and then that also takes me out of multi-window. So I'll show you guys that one more time. So if I want Chrome or this, you just sort of drag it to the top or bottom of the screen and then that app takes over. Just kind of a neat little neat little feature there. Um, so 
the, the thing, or I guess I should say the area you interact with is actually the bottom area. So it does pull up your apps, um, but if you don't want any of those, you can actually hit home and then you can see the top window hides for a second and then you can actually go in to say your app drawer and find an app that maybe you do want to use. And so then I can resize. Um, and maybe I want this to be my full screen or my top app. So then I long press again. And uh, then maybe I want Chrome back so we can look at Droid Life again. So you kind of see how that works. There are some apps you'll open that'll say this may not work in split screen mode. Um, also, it does work in landscape mode. So you can flip landscape and adjust these things around if they let you. And the same thing, you can swipe them over to expand them into a bigger window which is kind of cool. And then you can long press again to get back into this menu. And then I could pull up like messenger or something like that. So you can see how this, this can, this can work and could be quite a useful, um, app. So that's sort of what multi-window looks like on the phone. Uh, pretty powerful, but still probably has a little ways to go, but definitely cool to see it implemented on phones. And then of course it'll be on tablets as well. Uh, so at this time, I think that's mostly it, uh, in terms of just things you'll see and interact with, um, on a daily basis. Now, again, there's some new things built into Doze that should help it last, help your battery last even longer. Um, again, there's VPN support and the screen calling and blocking and all of that. And we can't necessarily show you on video, but that's sort of what you're looking at. And again, it's available now. So if you want to flash Android N on your supported Nexus device, you can do that. And there's actually OTA updates coming this round. They're actually going to sort of improve upon that as well. So you can get new updates quicker. Uh, for now, that's just been a quick look at the Android N preview one. Uh, if you have comments, questions, or want us to dive into anything else, we can do that. We're Droid Life. Peace.